because you smelled the free coffee. Uh, well, this is One Million Cups, a weekly entrepreneurship event, where two startups from our community come up here and present to you guys for six minutes what they're working on and building here. And then it is incumbent upon you to fill the next 20 minutes with incisive questions, comments, suggestions, connections, um, random thoughts, uh, ramblings, anything really you want, although hopefully more directed to helping out the startup that's up here. Uh, how many of you guys is this your first time here? Nice. Well, welcome. Hopefully first of many to all of you. You're really going to enjoy it. We could not do this, of course, without our uh, gracious sponsor, the fine folks at Cow Coffee. Yay. Yay. Delicious. <laughs> uh, we also cannot do this without our uh, many volunteers who help us out all the time. Akira and Nick, manning the cameras and sounds. If you want to check out the past presenters, uh, they are uh, now professionally filmed. It actually looks very good as opposed to the way we were doing it before. Uh, Carly, who is here at the greenhouse, she produces the awesome weekly email you can get by signing up hey, over there at the hey, sign in. Hey, hey, tell you about the presenters and tell you about the events that we have in the community, uh, which we'll touch on a little later in the program. And then my fellow organizers, uh, of which all are represented by Murray Ann Bowers. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I am Sean Kennedy, and I am going to introduce you guys to a dynamic startup called Health Hero, presented by my friend Ann. All right. Thanks so much, Sean. Correct. 
All you need to know is that this is the flashpoint. 2015 is the flashpoint year of being able to take the stipulations of participatory and health contingent outcome programs to make sure that we can reward employees for getting healthy. You guys can get paid for your health by doing simple things. The tough part is that companies need a very dead simple way to manage this, specifically the small and medium sized business segment. Everyone in this room, most of us do not work for large enterprises. Nine out of every ten Floridians works for a small or medium sized business. There are 1,500 small and medium sized businesses for every one large enterprise. In the US, that represents 160 million employee opportunity. Untapped market globally, it's a three billion opportunity. These are companies that are looking for fun solutions. They're looking to reduce productiv improve productivity, reduce stress, improve culture. They're looking for low tech solutions that work across multiple countries. But they're also looking for family uh, embedded programs that include the family and friends. They're looking for something that's personal as well. And that is what we do. We have a proprietary process called Go, Know, and Grow. So basically, day in the life, we all work for, say, Acme Company. We do a health risk assessment on Health Hero. We can do that through text message based. We can do it through a native iOS app, Android app, full end to end complete platform. Simply put, take a health risk assessment, connect your Jawbone, connect your Apple Health Kit, connect your Runkeeper, connect your Nike. We integrate with 99% of the health apps and devices out there. Record your healthy activity, get back $50 to $100 a month back onto your paycheck or onto a health savings account. That's as simple as it gets. The product is fully complete, so to go through the features, functionality, and benefits, it's personal. We include the family and friends. Um, we're le uh, letting people text message back and forth, so you, know, you don't need a smartphone to, uh, to interact with health care. You're getting delightful, welcoming messages, and you record your biometrics, your weight, your steps, your healthy activity via text message. Uh, we're calling you, we're asking very delightful questions on what you're doing, what you're not doing, so we get to understand you. And that's feeding our secret sauce, which is our machine learning and deep learning algorithm to make sure that we're offering you the best care that you possibly can get. It's fun. So it's social, it's gamified, we integrate with all the wearables out there, real-time analytics, all platforms, and our secret sauce is machine learning. This gives you just the day in the life. So for instance, again, Florida Blue has seed funded our company. Um, you know, we're going to be working with them. Florida Blue is a 7 million member network. And they're also the tipping point. Florida is not just the tipping point in politics, it's a tipping point in healthcare. So, you know, we're looking to get distributed out with the full Blue Cross Blue Shield network. But at the end of the day, we know we have a product that solves a real problem, right? It makes people well. So I'll go through that in just a second. A little bit more of our secret sauce is that 95% of our process is machine learning. We're doing a lot of complicated things on the back end to understand all the characteristics about what you're doing, what you're not doing, when you're doing it, or when you should do it, so we can offer you real love and care at the right time by a real human, one of our happiness heroes. 6% of every single workforce drives 80% of the healthcare costs. And so we hyper-target that 6% with a love and wellness coach. So it's a unique combination of machine learning and a human approach. And we're offering those health predictions and real-time insights. Our process works. So you get on our platform. Any company in safety that gets on our platform, these are our stats that we'll, um, that we'll have. Your, people are going to lose weight. Health risk factors are going to improve. And the participation in our wellness program is going to be three to five times better than whatever is existing in any company. We charge five times less than the competition. Our product's ready. We have revenues and we're set for distribution. But most importantly about the team, I told you a little bit about myself. Most importantly, we're uh, backgrounds from Nielsen, created products from PSG, Unilever, HP. Wally had his own wellness company. Brian used to work for an indirect competitor five years ago. He's a monster in sales. Tom Chi created Google Glass. He's an advisor. Most importantly, we also have Ted Zacco, who is uh, responsible for the largest wellness acquisition in history for $200 million to Johnson & Johnson in 2008. We have a blueprint, and we're executing against that blueprint. It pays to be simple, open, no, sorry, that's it? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Go to market strategy, a lot of partnerships, enterprise SaaS, um, align yourselves with incentive companies, it puts us in eyeballs across many countries, we're raising around, it's a great opportunity, 10 to 20 uh, return over the next 34 months if you're interested in being in, in direct competition, 75% um, close on our seat uh, round convertible note, we close over the next two or three weeks. Uh, know anyone interested in health and um, looking to make a return, let us know. It's gonna be well-optimized money. Um, that's about it. So explain again exactly how you guys make money. I didn't really catch that. Yeah, so uh, $3 per employee per month, your company pays us. 
you got you have a ten thousand person company, and we're making thirty thousand dollars a month. And how many how many I guess users do you have right now? Uh, we have about five thousand on the platform. So we just released the platform last year, and so the deep risking that we wanted to do is price risk, right? Do both companies pay us that amount? Um, does our process work? Does it change behaviors? And does it scale? All of our customers have been outside of Florida. So we'd like to change that. We'd like to have most of our companies. I actually don't know what you do. I, I know that it's great, everybody's real quiet. What is it though exactly? Uh, it's a simple employee wellness <coughs> program. It's, but you're getting on. You show it to us? Or? Yeah. It, just uh, from, a, from an application okay, standpoint. What, what happens to me? Yeah, as soon as you sign up, you're going to basically be thrown into um, uh, a questionnaire, ask you 15 questions, and you're going to have an experience where you can record your healthy activity. You take your 15 questions, you're going to get rewarded for it, and you're also, for your specific company, you can connect your devices, you record, record your healthy activity, get $50 a month on your paycheck or onto your health savings account. What is the, um, what, like, what is so you can hit this button right here, and then you can record your activity manually. You could take your Fitbit if you have a Fitbit or a wearable device, and then hit that button, and then you can connect it, and then automatically it feeds over every single night. If you said there are 15 questions, what would three of those questions be? Oh, um, what's, what's your daily intake of vegetables? How stressed do you feel? How much nutrition are you taking? Things like that. You can start to introduce mac and vegetables. Uh, how much weight do you put on diet in particular being vegan? Yeah. It's really important. So all the all the you know <coughs> holistic people that live holistically and are into nutrition and vegans, it shows in the biomedical, <coughs> right? So depending on the type of engagement we work with on your company, you set a certain threshold. That's obviously going to shine on your biometrics and your thresholds and you know your BMI and things like that. A lot of our platform is all about um, holistic wellness, mind, body, and spirit, right? So you know, Kale and CrossFit will only get us so far, but there's so much more beyond that. So we have hundreds of challenges on our platform uh, that we customize for every company, and we actually use the health risk assessment questions that you answered to customize those challenges as well. And so you can check into those via text message as well, very simply, or you can swipe on your on your phone. Uh, yeah, I reach out to just companies with employees who want to self-employed. Which employees? The self-employed. Self-employed, yeah, is a big opportunity as well. So. A couple of the channels that we're, we're going after are self-insured. These are our main pillars of channels right now. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield is that predominant one that we're going after. Uh, probably about 20 to 30% of our efforts is around directly to companies, but also self-insured. Uh, people platforms and center platforms, this gives us a global spread as well, enterprise platforms. So this is, these are our forms of distribution. But self-insured is big. Um, if anyone knows any self-insured companies, let me know. Who pays the employee $50 a month for being good? Is it the Blue Shield or is it the employer? Employer does. So that's a deal they make with the with who? Correct. With you? They, correct, yeah. And we coach them to do that and they want to do that because it's only until you start putting roughly around fifty dollars of, of money on the table that we start to get our attention, right? And so you start to bend that cost curve because your participation goes up when there's money on the table. You start having that fear of missing out and then you're gonna say, Wow, what's this awesome healthier thing? I wanna use it and, and the incentive for the employer paying fifty dollars a month to their employees is they're going to reduce their premiums with the health insurance company? Right, one to four or one to 16. And so that's our obligation. So for every dollar invested in our program, our goal is to show them in less than two years a $4 return on investment or $16 return in that range in healthcare costs. And we, we work to analyze those health claims as well. And so if we don't, if we don't reduce those health care costs, um, we won't be in business. So that's, that's, the, that's the match for our program. So quick question. With, uh, uh, you talk you talk about having different challenges and different things that people can do. I'm curious because so much of health is a bit subjective. There's stuff that we definitely know, but you know there uh, if you, you, there are people that want to have x, x grams of protein every day, and there's some right. that are vegans that want no grams of protein. Um, do, you, do you set up a profile based on some generic current diet that they already have? Or, <clears throat> um, how do you address you know, how, how different some people feel about what is nutrition? Yeah, we not. Yeah, so same, very similar question. So it's about really hitting thresholds. So if you look at it, just three buckets from an employer standpoint, there's really three check boxes to check. Are you doing a health risk assessment? There's two stages. You're one, are you doing the health risk assessment? Are you doing a biometric screen to get the participation? 
reward for that. And you might get four fifty dollars a month, you know, for that. Um, then year two, let's up the ante a little bit. Now you have to hit certain thresholds on that health risk assessment. Now you have to hit certain thresholds on that biometric screening when you go to Quest or Lab Four. And um, so, and then we also have a participatory aspect of it, so that on a daily, weekly basis, you have a fun way to record your healthy activity that's helping you to achieve those thresholds as well. So a part of it is on you, right? So you're the CEO of your own health. But psychologically, you're going to realize, oh my gosh, I really need to hit those thresholds this year to get my money. I had my spouse with the program for it in over 150. Right, so the thresholds you're talking about weight, you're talking about blood pressure? BMI, you... blood okay. glucose, okay. risk. And it's all boiled down to risk and, and um, you know, medium to high risk. So it's up to the individual to get to those biometrics, however. Exactly. And the struggle point with most wellness programs of today is that they leave it to this one snapshot every single year. But companies have dramatically failed in providing a simple, fun, rewarding daily process for the employees to compete, to connect, and to challenge each other. The focus of wellness programs in the half century or less in which they've existed as a term and a concept has been almost entirely on risk reduction and what you call biometrics, various assessments, and the like. To what extent, once you get going, do you expect to provide the public as well as your constituents with an understanding of what wellness is, what it means to be well beyond the medical issues in terms of enjoying life and exuberance and personal discipline and all the rest. Yeah, um, you know, our philosophy, I mean, the way we think of the world uh, is, is very similar to that, you know, and that, that informs the way we build products and the way we, we evolve ourselves as a company. It's <coughs> pushing that back onto the people, right? So if you look at it from social aspects, a lot of the way we think about our health today comes from our friends and family. And so you don't want that, you don't want a module, you're right? A module on a corporate intranet is not gonna solve a health problem. So with the way that we have structured our program, it's all about the people. So it's all about social. So you're seeing, you're letting your family and friends comment on whether your food's healthy or not. You know, take a picture of your food on Healthy Road, take a picture of your fries. And don't let the corporation tell you that the fries, fries are not real food, but let your family and friends see that because you took a picture of it and they can rate it. And, you know. Just a quick follow up. Yeah. You said earlier that your focus, you're not going to stay in business unless you can contain costs. Right. And that's the main reason that all those programs have failed because they're not able to do wellness when they're trying to cut costs, which is all medical stuff. And so you've got to balance that. You've got to figure a way to do both, to educate people while you're addressing the employer's concerns yeah. about sick people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I echo that uh, tremendously. A lot of wellness programs haven't had this huge lever of health, what healthcare reform brings is like full throttle the ab ability to incentivize employees like never before. And that just started last year. So Fortune 500s are just taking notice that they're leaving money on the table to incentivize all of us so we can make a change for the better. And so that's a powerful lever, but that's not the only lever that we crux upon. It's important that we provide the simplest, the most fun experience for employees to interact with each other in a white label way, full white label for every single company that feels unique and very similar. <coughs> no different than any consumer experience like on Nike or Apple. Question for Many small and medium-sized businesses have given up providing health care because of the premium escalation. Right. It also seems that government's trying to force everybody into the bond so to get, a, get that massive yeah. coverage. So at that point, when those businesses don't have a health care yeah. expense to an insurance company, because it's all now being handled by that, yeah. and we'll see whether we get penalized down the road or how that's going to work. How would we estimate any savings? Because we have a $3 per employee cost and the incentive, whatever the company chooses to put in to make it work. Now we have clearly an outgoing expense, substantial, depending upon the number right. of employees, and no way of measuring whether the government's saying, oh, you're helping us save money. Right. So if I'm correct, the understanding is how do we how do we measure and account for those healthcare cost savings as we funnel citizens to the Exactly. Um, so that is actually a second revenue stream for us. So um, this is on camera right now, but I'm okay, definitely confidently saying this. So um, companies like Sam's Club, all of us will be getting our health insurance from retail companies, right, in the future. So one very important aspect of what we're doing is making sure that we are a preventable wellness piece on those exchanges. One of those will be Florida Flu. 
on the consumer end. And so there absolutely will be the same logistics, uh, analytics, and making sure that we're quantifying those savings from those exchanges standpoint. Right? We can't get a part of healthcare.gov right now, even though you know I'm gonna see about the government probably once a month uh, and try and call them. Um, but uh, that's one aspect. So the same exact the same scenario that I pitched with our product, same thing on the consumer end. So we'll have those, you know, they're interested, the health exchanges are interested on that end as well. Uh, there's a lot of other companies that we're talking to as well um, about having a white label experience for their health exchanges. They're very interested in making sure they have a preventable piece as well. Where would yeah. my expense come from? Because I'm not, I'm not paying stamps about the employees to be going there and buying their money into their exchange through that way. Right. So the employee may see a savings because they're participating. Right. But the business, I mean, we feel better about helping the employees. Right. But, uh, the cost of what you're saying has to show up in the business side for them to continue to support. Right. Um, you know, mainly the reason why people buy from us and the most important savings that one's going to get is really productivity and culture metrics, right? So my background, HR metrics, right? HR background. Um, we're talking about recruitment, real recruitment, retention, turnover. Uh, workers' conference productivity. As a CEO, all of us put in our CEO hats today, that is the difference that makes a difference in making sure that people want to work for our company and stay within our company. And that's what our program does as well. So in the short term, you're not looking for to, you know, to, to watch boiling water to see if your healthcare costs are going to improve. You're getting messages as a manager saying healthcare will improve your recruitment and retention costs. That's why it's critical for us to embed with people platforms like ADP, benefits, Workday, that's an important part of our strategy as well. And these aren't just logos, these are relationships that we have in place. So. <coughs> I know a, a huge part of the health care loss for the technological Yeah. Absolutely. So that 6% that drives 80% of the healthcare costs in a company, um, those people need a, they don't have a fitbit problem, they definitely don't have a kale problem. They have sometimes psychological problems, they have backgrounds. And so that's why it's important that our happiness heroes, which are pre-vetted, loving dietitians and fitness coaches, really talk and uncover those certain things. And sometimes we may come into a scenario where we may need to funnel that person into the, the EAP program, right? There's something deeper there that we need to dig into. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're right okay. Yeah, it's a scenario, but a, a different scenario for everybody. So, the answer to the general question is long-term benefit. Yeah, it's a, well, basically on the health exchange scenario, the, the benefit is more of a short-term benefit for the specific company. So productivity, recruitment, retention, workers' comp claims, um, participation, those are the things that a leader is going to be most concerned about in the short term. And it's very obvious to extrapolate that and know that if you continue on that progress over a two to three year period, your health care costs are going to reduce. BMI is improving. Weight loss is improving. Stress reduction is improving. Those are things that as a CEO that we're um, so how does how do the metrics from your system actually get to the insurer to help those costs drive down? Um, so for us, we have an open we're the only employee wellness uh, company out there with an open API. Um, so basically, we're funneling that information back. We're not doing that as of yet, but on the back end, our our systems are going to be connected, and a few of these we're already connected with, um, and then that makes it into their their dollars and their equation basically. So it's basically just all in the back. Are you talking about technically or? No, what you just said is fine. Yeah, so like, I assume you work with Florida Blue first. So they would do an integration with you and if, you know, I as an employer use Florida Blue to offer insurance for my employees, as they use the system, your API is pushing information back to them, which in turn might have immediate results, or you're saying it probably takes at least a year. Um, no, it can be definitely less than a year. And so, yeah, I mean, just, just to be very open with you, I mean, our goal is definitely be to be the wellness portal piece for Florida Blue. I mean, they don't have what we have in place to lose it. So what happens with the, so it, if I don't use Florida Blue, I'm dependent on your system to integrate with my insurer down the road for those costs to, to drop, or are there other ways? No, there's other ways. So we can work with the other carriers as well. We're not exclusive. So we can definitely work as, a, as an add-on piece to the Cygnus, the Humanas, to the Uniteds as well. Absolutely. I'm not sure I have a question. Uh, but my, my concern, you know, thinking about this, you said 6% would say of the employees drive 80% of the cost. You hear things like 30% of us are obese. That in the end, you're tackling the most difficult, the most challenging 
part of our society, right? You know, the, the super size, you know, when you go to McDonald's, et cetera. I mean, right? That's the behavior that you have to change. Or in the long run, these costs are not because you yeah. say for me fortunately, I don't have a lot of medical costs. So you don't have a lot of room to save on me. Yeah. Okay. But those that piece of your identified. So in the long term, yeah, if you don't get them engaged, if you don't change the most difficult part of our culture right now. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I'm shaking up. Wow, I mean, that's the risk that I, you're facing, right? So, that's, I mean, you're yeah. putting a real pretty face on this, but you're talking about taking on the most difficult thing. Yeah, and, and that's, honestly, that's the fun part, right? If this was easy, why would, you know, everyone would be doing it. Right. But the most important thing that we wanted to do in year one, right, is de-risk, right? And any startup, anyone that's starting up a business, it's important to de-risk. Mm -hmm. We de-risk de our process, right? So we, again, before we built anything, we talked to executives, we talked to brokers, we talked to insurance companies, and we found out the formula. And now we're just taking that formula that has worked for successful Fortune 500 companies that have reduced healthcare costs. We're commoditizing that Florida, that, that formula, and we're distributing that in a small and medium-sized business segment. And that formula is do a health risk assessment, let's understand your risk, let's make sure that you're hitting some biometric targets, let's make sure that you're doing healthy activity on the fun portal that's social, it integrates with your friends and family, and it's something that you want to interact with daily. And let's make sure you put dollars on the line. And once that's in place, psychologically, you will, you're, you're, you will personally will take notice. It may be 50, maybe $100 a month. It may be a different hot button. But what you're saying is there's an, a real example of a Fortune 500 company that you could then show has taken that most challenging segment, that 6% or that 30%, has made a quantified change in, in their behavior. Absolutely, there's lots of Fortune 500 companies that have done it, and we talked to them, and we've analyzed their, their case studies, and so what, what are five? Uh, for instance, like uh, Pepsi is one, uh, Safeway is another. Um, the big companies. There's a, there's a bunch of others. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of others. I, I think the most important part, the most important part to understand is. Um, we're now at the biggest levers. So those levers were in place. Healthcare reform is just coming about, right? So that's more money that we can toss at people. But it's about the product as opposed to it is to incentives. So it's a balance of all these things. Oh, sorry. So I mean, this is Lawrence Burger makes sense for big corporations, and it's been in place for a long time, so it's accepted. But small businesses accept it, especially. Um, I mean, this is like selling the idea to them. Like the gentleman that I said, they're, they're putting money up front. Now, I mean, that seems like it's going to be your biggest challenge. Right yeah, now. you know, going direct with small business is not scalable for what we do. So it's basically getting to those small businesses through channels like exchanges like ADP, incentive platforms, HSA platforms. And so that's our good market strategy for small and medium-sized businesses, where they already have streams and flow of who's getting paid for what. And there's a stream and flow that can be paid for help. And so getting a part of those from an enterprise SaaS plan, you know. So distribution-wise, that's that's what's there, and then making sure it's a very affordable model for them, anywhere from you know two to three dollars per employee per month. We also have a unique shared savings model that we're about to get into, which is basically we don't get paid unless we're showing improvements for that small and size business. And that's the with mass scale, we can afford to do that, right? And the right capitalization, which is a part of why we're getting some funding. So, awesome presentation. How can we as a community help you grow? Yeah, no, thanks, Sean. Thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. So yeah, we're just coming out of the accelerator yeah. program, thinking about St. Pete. You know, we're looking for office space. We're looking for community support. We're doing some interesting things also on the consumer front on the with the city of uh, the city of Tampa, uh, the parks and recreation. So I know you and I talked. You know, getting an introduction maybe to the parks and recreation people, um, brokers, benefits companies. Um, those are relationships that we need. We already established a relationship with Welch and Wilmington down the road. Um, businesses. If you work for a business, we want to, there's no reason why there's a top company in St. Pete that should not be using Health Hero. So that's our goal this year is to make sure that we're working with some of the top companies in St. Pete and getting Health Hero into their their um, their uh, their company. And uh, for us, it's just a two week lead process. We can customize an experience for any company in less than five minutes. Um, so that's a big ask, I would say. Um, Investors that are looking for a return, again, we're raising a seed round of financing. We've got about 160K left that we're looking to fill if you're interested. Um, those are the main things. Um, you know, I just want to be out there, you guys. I mean, there's lots of good vibes and energy and out here in St. Pete, so uh, I'm feeling it. <laughs>
startups that are happening over the next couple weeks. Um, tonight, we actually have a really neat event that's happening here at the Greenhouse. It's the Entrepreneurship Roundtable with the Mayor. Um, uh, the space is very limited, so if you want to attend, you do need to sign up, and you can find that on stankeygreenhouse.org slash townhalljan, or just go to the Stanky Greenhouse event page, and you can find it there as well. Um, and then a couple days later, you have Alligator Zone, which is a neat event happening in the library, the Jan Platt Library in uh, downtown Tampa that is about connecting um, kids with startups and getting kids at you know, the grade school age and high school level to start thinking about that entrepreneurial mindset. So if you have kids that you want to bring to this event, it's completely free. Um, again, we'll send out more information on our mailing list um, at the end of the day with all those details on it. You have a Tech Talk, which is always hosted at Microsoft in Tampa as well. Um, it's about uh, the, the story of a startup. It's very similar to a uh, format you know, like One Million Pumps, but they're very uh, successful and seasoned entrepreneurs that are presenting. So it's a great way to come and learn from other successful people in the area. Uh, 8.30 in the morning at Microsoft. Then you have also another event that's happening here at St. Pete Greenhouse is Digital Entrepreneurship for Teens. There still is some space, but it is limited. So again, you will need to sign up if you want to attend that. And then the last event we have is uh, here in St. Pete on the 21st over at Iron Yard. And if anyone who is looking to start a business, uh, this is a place for you to learn how to build your own website using WordPress for free. So it's a, a brief tutorial that's going to walk you through all the details to get your website up and running. And you'll have a lot of very technical resources uh, willing to help you for free. So I encourage you all to check out Iron Yard's website for that if you want any other details. Um, but again, all of the information will be on our mailing list at the end of the day. So up next. We have Brent with Neck Last, so please give him a warm round of applause. Hello, everybody. Who loves downtown St. Pete? Yeah. Yeah. I love it too. There's no better place to start a business than downtown St. Pete. I've been here 10 years from Atlanta. I've done this at least 12 times in this town. Uh, whether I started on a bed and breakfast, the Rock and Roll b and and sold it, or I co-founded the I Love Downtown St. Pete, downtownstpete.com uh, Facebook page and sold it. Or most recently, I launched a bar at cost.bar. Didn't quite work out. I fell into that category this time and failed. But in St. Pete, you're in paradise. You can bounce back. Not that bad. So I'm the inventor of the neck glass. What is the neck glass? We're talking fun here. All right, we're talking, this is all about fun. For the 96 Olympics, I invented this, okay? What this is, I can walk around, I can walk on the beach, I can go to any outdoor event, and guess what? I can have my beer, I can have my drink, and it won't spill. And I'm hands-free, I can do a lot of this. All right, it's a very simple concept. We've got a patent-pending ridge in here to where the drink won't spill, so you can shake it, but anytime you can take a drink. I've been testing testing this out at the beach, and uh, I took this out from some beach bars, and I said, this was printed on a 3D printer. I said, try and break it to some drunk people. Well, they, they actually did. <laughs> uh, I banged it on, a, on that rock bar at the, uh, at the beach. But what I like about this product is that uh, I've got this uh, a mold being made in China right now for $2,500, and what I've, what you can do with this is you can print up custom stickers for whatever <coughs> event or bar or <coughs> beach hotel. Uh, so that means that each one can be customized. So when you go to an event, when you go to a beach bar, what better memory to take home than a neck glass? Uh, I've got this down to it costs about 90 cents. Um, what I'm here looking from you guys is I don't want to pay for the mold and I don't want to pay for this, the, the, the initial startup. I invented it, I patented it, so it's $2,400 for the mold and then it's another $2,000 to get a thousand units shipped here and have that done in 45 days. I went around to a bunch of mold makers locally and it's $40,000 to get an aluminum mold made. I was blown away. Chinese can do it for $2,400, $2,500. The locals 
told me it would cost up to $3.50 to make this. A Chinese can make it for 90 cents. So I did a lot of research. I found a company in China. They make these, which are awesome for Princess Line cruises. And I checked, I had, I had to check their plastic because everybody's concerned about plastic. My girlfriend will not drink anything, any water out of plastic. Every day I'm lugging a glass, one of those big glass things, to the glacier vending machine because she won't drink water out of, out of, out of one of those plastic things that they deliver. So I really got into researching the different kinds of plastics, making sure it's BPA free and all the quality. Because I could actually get this down to 30 cents, but it might, it might cause cancer after the 30 cents. <laughs> so I really got into, I was like, let me just get the cheapest plastic, whatever, and make it. Make it. She's like, no way in hell once that comes out. So BPA free, I found out that you got to get the right plastic. And she really helped me, you know, some of the additions to this. Ah, shot glass, so that it will stand. The 3D printer made it a little small, so it doesn't quite stand. Let's see where we're going with that. Um, also, the future of beer pong stands in front of you. Okay, what's the problem with beer pong? It's gross. Beer pong needs a freaking table. Well, now you can play beer pong without a table. You can bank it off my nose. You can bank it off here. Oh, does this look good on a bikini girl? A girl in a bikini, this looks amazing. So, it sells itself. People come up to you on the beach, where'd you get that? It advertises itself. And so, I'm seeking almost $5,000 from you guys to get involved in the next beer pong phenomenon. <laughs> What you got? <laughs> how, do you, how, how do you uh, find the, the Chinese manufacturer? The Alibaba. I probably talked to 50 different companies. I got a range everything from $1,500 for a mold to $30,000. And I just keep banging at them, banging at them. I just know we pay them. It's tough to get samples out of them. I spent $50 at least 30 times to get samples fed next to me of their products. And this was the one that I felt closely resembled. Uh, you know, what it was also the feedback. When they, yeah, I, had, I went to a local architect to design this. Like I said, I invented this for the 96 Olympics. Failed miserably. It was a 12-ounce. This is a 16-ounce. Uh, my booth got canceled at the Olympics. So I tried to sell these off of my arm. Everybody at the Olympics said, that's the coolest thing ever. Where'd you get it? I invented it. No, no, you picked those up off the ground. <laughs> and you're reselling them. I'm like, no. So it needs to be sold at an event with a sticker from a booth. I found that out. Uh, you can't just sell these <laughs> off your arm without a booth. You obviously pick them up on the ground. So I lost my ass, and for five years I gave away those neck glasses because I hate them. And, and I gave them away to my friends and had a little peach on it said 96. Uh, and then three months ago I kind of had an idea like, ooh, I need to bring the neck glass back bigger, better. I live here selling a neck glass in Atlanta, that's no good. But at the beach, maybe there's something. Anyway. Yeah. I think I speak for everyone. Do you have a demonstration or a video or something like that that shows how it works, it doesn't spill? I, I do, here's the problem with this prototype is it doesn't hold water, it leaks. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean from through through the crack down here, so no I don't. Uh, I do have a nice YouTube video though. It's like, like, a little infomercial that we shot. Hi, I'm Brent Bruns, and I'm an inventor. One of the inventions that I had in the 1996 Olympics was called the neck glass. The neck glass was a 12 ounce cup that goes around your neck that allows you to walk down. <laughs> There's water in there right now. I, I like I said, but at any time, you can take a step. So, about 90 days ago, I didn't bring the neck glass back. I lost my butt. In the 96 Olympics, I showed up with 5,000 units. My booth got canceled. So, I went around during the Olympics with 
with these red glasses on my arm walking around trying to sell. People said, that's the coolest thing ever. Where did you get it? Well, I invented it. Now I'm in downtown St. Pete, and we have nothing but beach bars and beach hotels around the town. So what is the perfect container? I don't put perfect chocolate. Is there a beer? Perfect with novelty cup. You can't care how you can see. It's in that class of two days. I just recently had all the logos printed out of all these bars. It's cordial. All of the features. Not only do you have a good thing, it's a good thing. 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 They're interested, they want to do it. It just happens that one of the biggest bar suppliers in the country that supplies this type of stuff is in Margo. They're interested, they want to see them. They want to see the finished product. So that's where I'm at, I've got the demand. Uh, the price for a hurricane glass wholesale runs a dollar eighty to two fifty. I think I can get a little is what the bars are paying. Uh, what's great about this is the minimum order can be a hundred. If we can put the sticker on it. And they have a customized chotchke, if you will, for under three dollars. So to me, the minimum order, a lot of problems when you're doing those customized glasses like this from Princess Cruises, your minimum purchase is going to be a thousand to five thousand units to get it down under three dollars. Obviously, cruise line, they, they probably order a hundred thousand. Anyway, yeah. Well, a few quick things. <clears throat> is that considered an open container since it's a wearable? It's a wearable. I, yeah, I guess it is open to take. Okay. Good question. Yeah. Um, why not go to Kickstarter <clears throat> to raise the money? Great idea. Okay. Great idea. Uh, what do you think I should ask for? The full amount? I've heard that you shouldn't ask for more than two grand on Kickstarter. Uh, uh, I, think I, think I, okay. I think you can easily ask for the 5000 If not, you can go for 10 cents a thousand. Oh, yeah. Like okay. And then just ask for what? $10 a person to get an autograph? Any glass? Uh, come up with a few useful incentives okay. And, okay. And, yeah, and figure out. But, and what's that patent on? Is it a utility patent? Design. It's a design patent on, on the idea of a cup with a, a string to put on your neck or the. Correct. And also the bridge. Is that part of it? Yes, uh, yeah, the bridge is part of it as well. Why don't you go to the ball and ball? <laughs> So it doesn't actually go in the drink. Mm -hmm. 
modification, just a suggestion. If you're going to keep the bottle on the bottom, I know I play beer pong, you use water cups and then you drink out of your other cup. So if you were able to make that bottom ball uh, somehow open, like a latch, keep some water in there, dip the beer pong ball in there, it keeps it clean, you don't get sand either. Great idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of beer pong players here. <laughs> Do you want to build a business out of this or do you want to license the product? <coughs> what is your end goal here? Sell a million of these. So are you going to sell it? I'm open. Okay. I, you said you talked to you talked to Bar Products in Largo? Is that who you talked to there? I didn't mention the name, but yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's your deal. Okay. That. If you don't want to be in business of selling these for the rest of your life, that's your deal right there. I like the idea of going around to events, music festivals. And, and doing that part, the direct art products. You can do that without running the company. You, you, you okay. should be you can license the product. License. Hey, I'm going to hold that many times. Okay. Couple things. Um, ball thing that you have on the bottom. Why not just make that flat? It, to me, it's the design that makes it cool. Okay. And, and I just, when you see a, a drink in here, it looks really cool. No, leave it brown, but just. Where it on the I just don't know if it would balance, yeah. but that's it's good. Like, it should. It's, it, right, I got you. That's interesting. Or make it a little bit bigger, okay. round, where the bottom would be flat. And two, if you can do that with 3D, why not do that with the bottom? Do that with the bottom. Don't they have um, PB3 uh, or however you say that you know, type of um, material to make this? Oh, you would, it would never be cost effective. Oh, it's ridiculously expensive. Uh, yeah, just a prototype. And it took a really big 3D printer to do this. Most 90% of 3D printers print this big. That's one of the things I thought about. Yes, sir. Um, have you thought about like innovation on the business model itself? So, for instance, like a social change thing where, you know, for instance, Tom shoots, right, one for one. Maybe you can sell one and then for every one that gets sold, because it has a wearable factor, mm -hmm. right? It's got a presence factor. Drink wear. You know, for every one soul, there's something that gets contributed to the community for, like, you know, the... The, the biggest beer pong tournament in the world? Yeah. <laughs> or something that's <laughs> like, you know, it could be homelessness or something that the community cares about. Okay. You know, that could be a more viral aspect of it. So it's not just a cover, it's a movement, you know. It's a party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. See, the same thing's looking at opening up, you know, drinking on the streets or whatnot, using a specific cup. Really? I did not know that. A, a specific cup. Yeah, well, exactly. I think we have that cup. That's weird. As I think that, uh, I've, yeah, I've never even heard that anywhere where they've ever done a specific cup, have they? You can't be doing the same thing at Riverwalk. Okay. I'll specific like vendors. I like that. Yeah, I think it keeps the ball. I like the ball. Yeah. It's going to force you to wear it around your neck, which forces it to advertise and sell more things. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know that I go with the shop class as a separate piece. Yeah, piece. that was just kind of an afterthought. It's like, yeah, I think it's another piece that I don't know that the bars are going to promote. Oh, maybe they do, but, you know, sometimes they don't like promoting too much, like, you know, do a shot and a beer together. Right, you're right. Well, like well you're right from the, the advertising standpoint, you're right. It just keeps it on. You're a beach bar. You want a bunch of commercials for walking up and down the beach. Yes, sir. Building on that question, that point of like, how do you, how do you keep these on the bar so that the bartender can pour them or whatever? What if you maybe you know how you get a flight of beer sometimes, mm -hmm. like the little wooden things you pop, pop little shot glasses uh -huh. into? You could, you could experiment with having you know sort of a you know. By four size. Oh, I love that idea. Stand that you would, you know, it would be an upgrade. If a bar buys a hundred of these, they get the stand that Too holds fast. the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know what I mean? No, but I like that idea because you know, like you're sitting on the bar with a bunch of empty ones, yeah. and it's a marketing for me. Yeah. Instead of just buried in the back of the bar, like you know, hanging there. So I love that idea of having a row of them. Yeah, you know, ready something really nice and sweet. That would be very cool. Great idea. I love it. Yes, sir. What's the return on the 5,000 and how soon? And, uh, do I get 5,000 cups or do I get left <laughs> well, What I'd like to um, offer is double your money back in 90 days. So you're looking at 45 days. It takes 30 days to make the mold. 
Uh, then the Chinese are going to send me a dozen or so samples to be refined. Um, they've already got my 3D drawings. I've already spent $2,000 in drawings and renderings and going back and forth. Uh, the Chinese have a good, the Chinese company has a good handle on it. They, they sent me some prototypes that I really like to, to prove they know how to do it. So like I said, 30 days for the mold, and then they said once I prove that, uh, they can make 2,000 in about 15 days. They make, I think, 1,200 a day, but they're only making me a one unit mold to start with. Uh, I think it's four grand for a five unit mold, which gets my price down, but I'm really start with one. Uh, and then the problem, the biggest problem is shipping these. They can't be stacked very easily. So, um, but I, so I have to just have to ship by sea to keep my price down, which takes 38 days. So we're looking at probably two and a half months from when the money comes in, because I've got buyers, and like I said, bar products, dot com, uh, at Largo, and a bunch of bars are interested. It's just how are you going to get the mold? Uh, if you want the mold, can you get it from them, or do they own it? Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll ship me the mold. I own it. I bought it, but I the, the local people that make this thing that, that do plastic, their prices are outrageous. I've talked to everybody locally, and it's just they're on, they're in the two to three dollar range. Okay, one more question: What's the retail price on that? I think that the retail is that a bar should sell this ten dollars with a drink in it, um, and I think I want and I want to sell it to the bar in the two fifty to three dollar range wholesale, um, and then add twenty cents for the custom sticker. So I think that's in there. You know, if they look at it as a marketing and giving a, a nice personalized novelty from their location. Uh, I think the price is right in there, you know, what they've told. Do you have any uh, partners uh, of a local bars who are ready to follow you on this adventure? Do you have like, some name of bars who are ready to follow you? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, I've got local bars and hotels on the beach that are they're ready to go. They just want to see the finished product. OK, so you got a prototype. Let us see what it really looks like. So that's my hurdle. That's why I need to go ahead and, and put the money in and get a couple thousand units. Yes, sir. You say you have a design patent. When did you get that patent? A month ago. Well, if you, if you showed this thing in 1996, your patent's got real problems. I, I suggest you redesign it and get another patent because. Oh, no, this is, the, this is a new version. It's I got a new patent. <laughs> yeah. I had a patent back then, but it lapsed because I was just sick of the whole thing. The other one looked a, a lot different. It was a lot smaller. It was okay, almost like a shotgun. Patent. It's a design patent, so it's not going to stop somebody from taking the idea. You need to turn it in. Hey, move fast and break this. Right? Yeah. you got to move fast. <laughs> Every, you know, they're going to stop me. They're going to stop me. Yeah, but who's going to be more focused on it than me? Yeah, and this is something. Yeah, neck glass. Neck glass? Yeah. It's a little descriptive. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to care. <coughs> well, I mean, I'm the domain name. I have a Facebook that's, page. That's a very good start. You know, I, so I, all I know to do is if I got the Facebook and the domain, yeah. you know, I've got you to pop up a little bit. <laughs> 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 yes, sir. Your initial order, are you getting them in different colors? So I'm guessing every bar is going to want to have them the same. I'm going to start them in clear. I think clear is cool because when you put the drink in, whether it's a red drink, blue drink, yellow drink, that's where it really looks cool. And then when it's down to the last little bit, it, it just looks cool when it's halfway done. And you get people playing beer pong, it's fun, you know, and, and if it's $20 for you and a friend to play beer pong, and we keep, you know, neck glass, uh, ping pong balls behind the bar, kept in this display thing you guys have told me, I mean, it's a fun game for 20 bucks, right? And you get a drink. Why don't you stick the ping pong ball in with it? Yeah, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know, that's, that's an idea. <laughs> So the front it has a black face and that's where the sticker's supposed to go through. Correct. And the back side is just rounded. Correct. Okay, so if the back side is flat, would that keep it from maybe rolling while you're wearing it? I don't know if it's like an actual way that just There you go. <laughs> right on. You're, you have to dance though. Spin around. Yeah. And as long as the drink is underneath this ridge, it keeps it from coming out. Because that ridge makes the makes the water go like that. I'm sorry I can't display it. Epoxy on it. Great idea. It doubles as a bomb too. A <laughs> <laughs> little action bomb. Bar tables can be filled in. Or, uh, 
Yeah. 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 No, it's just like if you get a picture of here, same concept, picture. Is that 90 cents per glass? Is, is that your landed cost? Or is that? That's without shipping. So how much is it? How much is The 2,000 units, um, I think, was by boat, was $480. Uh, so it's 90 cents plus 480 divided into 2,000 units. That's where I'm at. So, you know. And it, like I said, these are rough numbers, but that's about where I'm at. So I think what the good thing is, I think once you start the orders, and it, it gets momentum. You, you build, you get a customer, they're going to keep reordering if it's a beach ball. Following on to some other comments about, you know, a lot of people have given you some thoughts on the shape and design. I mean, would it make more sense to speak with actual customers, whether they're these bar customers or survey? Uh, get input from people that would actually buy these things. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I drink on the beach every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And everybody wants one. So, you know, everybody wants one. So, Greg, how can we in the community help you spread this? Help you get that $5,000 and help you spread this guy? Somebody in here's got five grand on them, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I accept that. <laughs> uh, you know, I think this being, you know, made and born in downtown St. Pete, uh, whoever said the cup, this could be the cup that is St. Pete. I, I love downtown. So if this was another symbol of our city, you know, another <coughs> reason to, to come to St. Pete. When you come to St. Pete, you take a craft beer in my neck glass. The beer is made in St. Pete. The neck glass was invented in, in St. Pete. You know, maybe there's a tie in there. Uh, DTSB glass, uh, but you know, I think if everybody, I'm going to put this on Kickstarter if I don't walk out of here with a check for five grand, and um, and I think the Kickstarter way, I can post it on my Facebook and the I Love DTSB Facebook, and see if you know, who who wants to get the first two thousand numbers, you know, the number of like artwork is maybe the best way to get this money. It's not wearable, but it does have a 1 million cups logo. Started in 2015. All of our presenters up here will be gifted a lovely 1 million cups travel mug. Marianne, if you could hold that up to entice folks to present. Ooh. Absolutely. If you would like to present or know somebody who would, you can go to our website, 1millioncups.com slash There is a big orange button that says request to present. It is a fairly painless process to fill out the forms, but it will be in our system, and our team will contact you, and uh, we will go from there. I would like to thank all of you guys for coming out. There was a lot of uh, positive comments, a lot of activity on both a uh, way to make us healthier and a way to make us drunker. Uh, I don't know what that says about this community. Um, it's very confusing. <laughs> Uh, again, our signing sheet is over there. That's just to get our weekly emails about who is presented at One Million Cups, who's coming up. It is not used for anything else, so feel free to uh, fill that out. And uh, please, finish up the rest of the coffee and have a great one.